Hi, welcome to SCN Corporate Connect. I'm Justin Foley from the NASDAQ Market Site in Times Square. I'm joined today by Dr. Jonathan Javit, founder, chairman, and CEO of NeuroRx. Doctor, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, give us the overview of NeuroRx. So, NeuroRx was founded in order to bring to market the first generation of antidepressant drugs that will specifically treat suicidal depression and PTSD. Tell us more about the disease state that you're treating. So 33 million Americans have depression. Of those, 90%, 30 million have what's called major depressive disorder. They're not at immediate risk of self-harm. But you have this sub-segment of about 3 million people with severe bipolar depression. They account for 40% or more of the suicides that occur every year in the United States. And there's no drug for these patients today. We aim to create that drug and bring it to the market. It's a drug that's also going to work, we think, for people with PTSD. It's incredible, and I was reading about that. I didn't realize, and I don't think a lot of people realize that there wasn't a drug for that. I know you have some exciting news to share with everyone. Do you wanna go ahead and tell me a little bit about that? Well, we announced this week that FDA has granted us something called Fast Track Designation. And Fast Track Designation is designed for drugs that address an unmet medical need, that have preliminary evidence that they may work, and therefore the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has a special program to help speed those drugs to market. I know there's other antidepressant drugs out there. Tell me a little bit about why your drug is different than the other ones. So antidepressant drugs have been around since really the 1960s. They figured out that if you can raise levels of serotonin, you can decrease depressive thoughts. The problem is every one of those drugs has a suicide warning on the label today. We've known since 1988 that these drugs can cause a side effect called akathisia, which directly contributes to people committing suicide. There was a large article on this on page D3 of yesterday's New York Times. So there's never been an antidepressant that didn't cause akathisia, and that side effect in people with bipolar depression is absolutely lethal. There's something called electroconvulsive therapy, mm -hmm. ECT. Sometimes people call it electroshock therapy. Yeah, electroshock therapy. And believe it or not, in the 21st century, that's still the gold standard treatment for people with severe suicidal depression. Those people have been excluded from the clinical trials of every single antidepressant drug that's been brought to the market. And no antidepressant drug today is indicated in people with suicidal depression. So what we're left with is psychiatric hospitalization, which may in fact be involuntary if people sure. are unwilling to sign themselves in, and electroshock therapy, which believe it or not is an FDA approved treatment. The FDA recognizes that even though it has horrible side effects, Sure, it's still the only thing around, and it does work. So our objective has been, how do we understand the benefit that ECT creates in the brain? What are the neurotransmitters that are changed by electroconvulsive therapy, and can we produce that with a modern drug? Doctor, you mentioned NMDA receptors. Talk to me a little bit about that. There's another whole axis in the brain that's never been addressed before with any antidepressant drug. And we call that neurotransmitter GLX, which is a shorthand for glutamate and glutamine, well-known neurotransmitters in the brain. And those are the neurotransmitters that are increased by electroshock. Now, as I said before, the last thing we want to do is repeat the side effects of electroshock, but sure. we'd like to capture the actual benefit in brain chemistry. Because you had said that there was some benefit of electroshock. Well, there's clear, there's clear benefit from electroshock in that electroshock is known to raise GLX in the brain. And there are six different studies that show that GLX is suppressed in people with severe depression. Mm -hmm. It's suppressed in people with PTSD. We've been able to show that our drug produces the same chemical benefit, actually even more chemical benefit, in terms of raising GLX in the brain, as is shown with electroshock. 
we have a large number of vets returning from Afghanistan and the Middle East that are succumbing to this disease. Yeah. So it's and important now, it's topical, correct? Don't, don't believe me on that one. You know, listen to Secretary David Shulkin, our new Secretary of Veterans Affairs, who said you know, on national television that his top priority as Secretary of Veterans Affairs is to reduce the rate of suicide among troops and, and veterans. We're losing 22 veterans and soldiers every day. In the last 10 years, we've lost more military personnel to suicide than we have to contact with the enemy. How did you yourself get involved with NeuroRx? So I'm not a psychiatrist. In fact, I'm originally trained as an ophthalmologist. I'm a professor at Johns Hopkins. Been involved in public health projects my entire career. Uh, one of the first projects I ever worked on was you know, river blindness uh, in, in Africa and projects on glaucoma and macular degeneration and most recently inhaled insulin. Uh, but I've, I've always been unable to resist the opportunity to work on a, a first-in-class life-saving treatment. And then in 2009, I lost one of my closest friends to this disease, brilliant physician, uh, he ran the whole pain control program, research program at the National Institutes of Health. But even he, with all of his insight as a neurologist, when he was affected by this disease, couldn't help himself and ultimately took his own life. And I said, this is crazy. And began talking with my brother, who's a professor of psychiatrist at Columbia, had spent most of his career focused on new drugs for schizophrenia. And Dan said, well, wait a couple months. I may have something to, to show you. And sure enough, he came back a few months later and showed me the first data on decycloserine, which is the 70-year-old tuberculosis drug uh, that wow. turns out to bind to the glycine site on the NMDA receptor in the brain. So it has a very specific brain target. And uh, that drug has a very potent antidepressant effect. But not only does it reduce suicidal uh, depressive thoughts by 50%, mm -hmm. it reduces suicidal ideation by 75%. And none of the SSRI antidepressants has ever shown a potential to decrease suicidal ideation. In fact, as we discussed, they have a real potential to increase suicidality. That's an incredible story. And the fact that you have a personal attachment to this disease through a friend means a lot to someone watching that and understanding where you're really coming from as a doctor trying to you know, cure this disease. Where are you in the clinical trial process? So we're at the point where the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has granted us what's called an IND, an Investigational New Drug License, uh, in order to start a pivotal clinical trial. In other words, a clinical trial, some people call it phase two, three, where if the trial is successful, uh, this would lead to a, a new drug application to the FDA uh, and a drug that could be on the market as soon as 2020. Uh, the clinical trial is going to be led by Professor Andrew Nirenberg, who's the head of bipolar uh, disease research at Harvard's Mass General Hospital. In October, we're going to be announcing uh, three leading American in universities as clinical trial sites. The study drug has already been manufactured and the study drug quality has been certified to the FDA. So we're all ready to go. Doctor, what are some of the milestones you hope to achieve this year for your company? So achieving the fast track status that we just announced was a critical milestone for us. We're now working uh, with the FDA to finalize the clinical trial protocol under what's called a special protocol assessment so that we know in advance that the research we're about to do is research that will lead to a new drug approval if it's successful. Uh, and hand in hand with that, we're starting our clinical trial so that hopefully by the end of 2018, we'll have data that shows whether in fact we have a new life-saving drug or not. Uh, if we're able to meet those milestones, we'd be talking about the potential to file a new drug application sometime in 2019. And from a business perspective, what are your capital market goals? Well, so far the company's been financed by private investors, family offices, 
that have really believed in our story. Uh, and now that our patents are granted, we have patents out to 2033 that cover the use of this drug in treating people with bipolar depression and uh, suicidal ideation. Now that the patents are granted, now that the clinical trial is underway, we're actively talking with strategic investors, a number of biotechnology and uh, large cap pharmaceutical companies, uh, and we're beginning to talk to institutional investors about coming into the company uh, as a, a predicate to uh, beginning to talk to the public markets. So what else should our viewers know about NeuroRx and what you do? Well, the most important thing to understand about us is that we're here, we exist in order to give hope to you know, a group of people, you know, three million with bipolar depression, you know, 10 million with PTSD, people who sure. have really been shunned by the pharmaceutical industry. These patients with bipolar depression have not only not had a drug for their condition, they've been systematically excluded from the clinical trials of every known antidepressant because everybody knows that they're at high risk for self-harm and nobody wants that to happen in their clinical trial. Sure, so they avoid so it. So we're really here for the patients and their families. Doctor, incredible things happening at your company and you're doing some amazing work. Thank you so much for your interview today and your time. And thank you for tuning in to this episode of SCN Corporate Connect.